Hey guys and welcome back to another Unrenched and Force tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over setting up a charge attack. So what you do is you hold down your attack button and for the period of time you are holding it down you are charging up the attack so that when you actually do release it and you do the attack you deal more damage. I'm also going to be doing animations and setting up a cap on the maximum amount of damage you can do on this attack. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So what I'm going to do is it's very basic animations but I'm going to hold down my attack button which is the left mouse button and you'll see I'm charging it. I let go and in the top left you see how much damage I have actually done. We're going to be setting up this basic part today which you need to advance upon to actually get it set up work in your game and you might want to change the animations as well because I've just done some very basic ones where I've taken one attack animation and split it up into two but obviously you can do proper animations if you want. And the maximum I set this is to 20 so the maximum damage you can do is 20. So this is what we're going over in creating today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what I'm going to do first is show the animations I've created. So what I've done is I've downloaded this animation off of mixmode.com and I've basically just split it into two. So I've got, let me show you the charging first. So I've got the charge attack, which is the first part. So it's just that first part of it there. And then the actual attack is the second part of it, like so. And I have done videos showing you how to do some basic animation editing where you will be able to cut it up into two animations like this. So I'm going to close those and I'm going to select both of those animations right click and I'm going to create anim montages because I want to use them as montages instead of just animations so they nice and smoothly blend between each other. I'm also going to open up the charge attack montage and what I'm going to do is untick enable auto blend out. So what this now does is it when it gets to the end of the animation like this it's going to pause and stay like that otherwise it would just immediately end the animation and go back to our normal walking or normal idle but we don't want that we want it to stay like this while we're charging it. And this is why you might want to find a different animation so it's an actual idle one moving in this position or it's slowly going back as you're charging. It's up to you really but for me the basic animation I'm doing is this one here. I'm going to close that and now we're going to open up our character blueprint as this is where we want to do the code or wherever you have your current attack and damage code. So this might be in the weapon blueprint but for me it's going to be the third person character blueprint like so but it can be wherever you want. So now I'm going to be starting my attack and damage code from the beginning but this should be quite easy for you to advance upon and integrate this into your current code or you can restart with this. I'm going to right click and get my button for actually attacking which you can set up an action mapping or just get the left mouse button like this. Then what I want to do first is play the animation montage. So as I've pressed I'm going to play anim montage and what I'm doing first is I am charging the attack. When I press the left mouse button I'm charging it. When I release it I'm attacking. So this anim montage is going to be my charge attack montage like so. Then I'm going to control C, control V, connecting that into released and change this to the attack montage. So again when I first press it down we're charging it and when I let go we're actually attacking. Now what we want to create a boolean value. So we're going to hit the plus for over here naming this to be charging, leaving that as a boolean so it's true or false, compile and have the default value as false. And we're doing this because we want the code to know whether we are or aren't charging it i.e. holding down the button for a charging or however you have it set up so that way we can kind of create a loop to be constantly increasing the amount of damage we are doing based on how long we are charging the attack for. So if you hold down alt and drag in the boolean there you will set it and off of pressed we want to set it to true so tick and off of released we want to set it to false so unticked and then back up off of pressed so after we set it to true we want to check to see if this is true or false. So we're going to hold down B left click to get a branch connecting that in there and the condition is going to be the set charging like so just so we're going to be getting the value of the charging variable. Now this might seem quite stupid because we've just set it to be true and then we're checking to see if it's true or false. Obviously it's going to be true but this is where the start of the loop is going to be and this is going to determine whether or not the loop continues or stops. And so as I mentioned this is where the start of the loop will be. Up above this we want to right click and add a custom event as this is going to be the loop and I'm going to name this charge attack as that is what this loop is doing, it is charging the attack. And that is going to go into the branch there, so I'm going to move this back a bit actually. Because when we go back into the loop, we want to make sure this is still true, because if it is true, we're going to do the loop. If it's false, we're going to stop the loop, so that will go into nothing, so it then stops. But if it is true, like I said, we want to now be charging the attack. So what we're going to do is create a new variable and name this damage. Or if you already have a damage variable, you can use that. And this is going to be a float for me. Compiling, saving, I'm going to leave the default value as 0, but you can increase this if you want to have it as a base value that it can be. So maybe 5 or 10, whatever you like. If we hold down control and drag it in, we can get the damage. 
Out of this, we're going to get a float plus a float, so we can increase it. And then out of this, we're going to get a clamp float, so we can have a maximum value for it. And then we're going to hold Alt, dragging the damage to set it, connecting that into true of the wrench, and also into the return value of the clamp. So now we've got damage plus a value into a clamp, sets the damage. Let's actually set up these values now. So the plus, this is how much we want to increase it by. I want to increase it by 0.5 each time. You can obviously set this to what you want as well, but 0.5 seems to be good for me. Minimum, I'm going to keep a zero, or again, the minimum amount you want the damage to actually be. And the maximum is also the maximum amount of damage you want it to be, which for me is 20. And this might change for you from weapon to weapon, or you can increase or decrease it based upon what you want. Again, for me, 20 seems to be good. And again, that goes into the set damage there, like so. And that is all we need inside of the loop. Now we just need to end the loop. So this is start, this is the body, this is going to be the end. The end, simply hold on D, left click to get a delay, connect that into there, and the duration of this is how quickly you want this to fire off. So I want to set it to 0.07 seconds. So every 0.07 seconds, the damage is going to increase by 0.5 as long as the player is charging the attack. Again, you can obviously customize this to change it and get it perfect for however you want, but for me, this is going to be fine. Then after the delay, we're going to call the custom event, which we set up earlier, which for me is the charge attack, like so. So again, that is going to loop it as long as this is true. As soon as it's false, i.e. we let go, it's then going to stop the loop as it doesn't get called again. And this is now our damage of the weapon. Back down to the release when we actually do the attack. Very simply, we just need one node here, which is apply damage, like so. And the base damage is going to be our damage variable that we've just created. Now this, you might want to change for you, obviously depending on how you actually are damaging the enemy. For example, if you are finding out where they are based upon a line trace, you will want to do your line trace code here, then into the applied damage so you can find the damaged actor. I'm not setting that up now because I imagine you probably already have that set up, but if you don't, I do have other videos going over it as well, and if you want more specific help on setting up damaging enemies, I can go over that as well. For example, attacking enemies with a sword and stuff like that. Again, you'll probably want to use a line trace to get the actor to input into the damaged actor. Also, just for the dev purposes, I'm going to put a print string here with the damage, just so I can see how much damage we've actually done to the enemy. Compile and save, and we can close that, and that is all we need to do. One thing I should also mention though, is if you open up your animation blueprint, you want to make sure you have a slot default slot in here because we are using animation montages. And you can also set up upper body montages if you want as well, which I've gone over in previous videos too. So let's close this and hit play to test it out. If we hold down left mouse button, we've got the animation, we let go, you see our damage has gone up to 10.5. If I were to just press it less, it's 12. If I were to hold it for even longer, it's gonna go up to 20 and you'll see this is now working perfectly for us. Also, one thing I've just remembered is let's open up our code again. One thing we do need to make sure we do is after we have actually damaged the player, or the enemy, sorry, we need to reset our damage back to zero or whatever your default value is. So let's compile and save that. And that should now work a lot better for us. So, and let me also move this to actually be after my print string so I can still see how much damage I did do. But again, you don't need to do that if you don't have the print string, that's just for dev purposes. So you see if I hold it for that long, it's gonna be three. If I hold it for a little bit longer, it's gonna go up to 10 and so on and so forth. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything you want to do. We've set up a system in which we can charge our attack by holding down the left mouse button or just your attack button and you'll see the longer you hold it down, the more the attack will be charged. For example, that was 1.5, this one was six. If I hold it down for even longer, it'll be 16.5. And again, you can set up a maximum and a minimum, how much it increases by, how quickly, and all that good stuff, it's very easy to change. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.